what's the structure of consciousness and can it be instantiated by non-biological systems? And we shouldn't just sit back and go, oh, it's not biological. So this is a silly fantasy and we shouldn't investigate. I'm not saying that it is illogical or impossible. What I'm saying is that we have absolutely no reason to take the question seriously. I've started in my book, Artificial You, to develop tests for consciousness. Um, so one would be to box in the AI at the R&D stage. Boxing in an AI is a strategy in AI safety. So that means that you deny the AI access to the internet, facts about human minds, consciousness. It doesn't have access like, you know, Lambda did to Wikipedia. Um, and you ask it questions to see if it seems conscious. And if it does, and it didn't have access to those kinds of facts, then I think in that case, in the case of that system, we need to be very careful how we treat it ethically. It may be conscious for all we know. I think this is utter and complete fantasy, ungrounded in fact and ungrounded in reason. Um, it is a question of the following form. We know living beings are conscious, right? So why can't a computer be conscious? We have to be humble about that. Well, let me illustrate the same question in other words. We know birds fly when they flap their limbs, right? So we have to be humble about that. And so why can't I fly if I flap my limbs? Well, the answer is a bird and me are completely different things. Now, I, I'm not endorsing necessarily biological naturalism as a philosophical position, but I recognize that what we call biology in nature is a very complex, very unique, very specific thing that is unlike anything else in nature. There is nothing in nature that is not metabolism that looks like metabolism. Even the complex patterns of electromagnetic fields in the sun's corona, they do not look like metabolism. There is nothing that does. And I think acknowledging this empirical observation, this empirical fact is important. And we shouldn't co confuse humbleness with a kind of open-mindedness that opens the gates for all kinds of fantasies that we have absolutely no reason to entertain whatsoever. Let me just point out that if the Wright brothers said that, if they said, oh, only biological entities, i.e. birds can fly, and we can't make the leap to flight in airplanes, we wouldn't have airplanes, right? Flight is multiply realizable as the philosophers, you know, to use their, their jargon here. It can be instantiated mm -hmm. by biological and non-biological systems. And I think it's a very important question. What's the structure of consciousness and can it be instantiated by non-biological systems? And we shouldn't just sit back and go, oh, it's not biological, so this is a silly fantasy and we shouldn't investigate whether entities which are going to be very soon smarter than us and they're going to claim their consciousness quite possibly because there are advantages to doing so, are conscious. Uh, the question of flight is a question of behavior and it's fairly observable and we understand the mechanics of flight. When it comes to consciousness, it's a question of being. Are you conscious or not? It's not about manifested behavior. And we do not understand uh, from a reductive perspective how consciousness can be reduced to, to anything. So to say that um, a computer that uh, seems to simulate or emulate the patterns of information flow in a human brain is conscious is entirely analogous to saying that if I run a accurate simulation of kidney function on my computer, my computer will urinate on my desk. Uh, I'm not saying that it is illogical or impossible. What I'm saying is that we have absolutely no reason to take the question seriously on the basis of reason and, and, and empirical data. Okay, so let me just mention that some of the very top AI programs uh, right now are trying to simulate conscious machines to build AGI. So here I'm thinking of Yoshio Bengio's lab and at my center, uh, you know, Larry and uh, Eleanor Blum, you know, Turing Award winner, Lawrence Blum, it, they're trying to build conscious AI and they insist that doing so will yield the felt quality of experience as well as AGI. So you're appealing to authority. 
You're appealing well, to authority, a known fallacy. <laughs> You, you argue not, the point, hold but on, hold on, hold on, Bernardo. That wasn't fair. Right. I, was, just a I mean, that 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 wasn't just a fair because all I'm suggesting is a wait and see approach to machine consciousness, and I'm saying that some. What I was trying to get to was that some simulations, like the simulations they're building, we need to keep it open that certain AGI simulations may actually yield machines with phenomenal consciousness. They're claiming it and we can't close the door on it immediately just by calling it a fantasy, which, you know, isn't much of a um, great argument form either. 